everyone, my name is Vina, aka Miss WOC Reader and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I always find it interesting now how people do their best slash worst of and have it out like in the first couple of weeks of December because there's still like time where you can find your worst books of the year. So this year was interesting because there weren't a lot of books I outright hated that like caused me rage. Well I say that and then last week I read one of the worst books of the year. Definite one star. But there weren't a lot of books that I was like five star this is amazing. A lot of stuff fell in the four star range or the three star range or even like the 2.5 and it got rounded up. I feel like I did a lot of rounding up this year. So I was just like, I'm not just going to do best or just going to do worst. Um, and I was watching people do their best and worst videos and see the different style that they were doing. Them. And then I figured I'm just going to do categories, put the books into categories to make it a little bit easier and choose my best and worst from that from there. So let's get through it. So first category is best novella. So Best novella for me was Crimes of Passion, which is by Jack Harbon. It's an Audible original, which if you've read Audible original novellas, they're really short and easy. You can read them in like two hours. This one is a male male black romance, which is definitely needed. We don't, we don't, I don't see a lot of that. And it is by Jack Harbon, who was going by Jack Harbon at the time. Um, I know Jack is in the process of transitioning. Um, they were going by Br Bryn. I'm not sure if that's their current na author name so I don't want to say that and it be wrong. Just this one is listed under Jack Harbon which is a name that they no longer use. So I want to keep that in mind. But it follows these two rival true crime podcasters who like as a um, I think it was like a longtime fan as their dying wish like they wanted them to do a collab together so they do this collab together on this case and it's really interesting like if you've ever listened to a true crime podcast I think you'll like enjoy like the little like like their different styles of reporting it and I think they have great chemistry and really I have no complaints about this it did what it needed to do. Now my worst novella was Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse. Please, please don't ask me to explain what that book is about. I honestly don't remember clearly. I remember she was looking for her sister. I remember there was this really bad romance in the middle with like this dark demon-like character who I don't know if it was like magical realism or it was magic magic in this book exactly but they really didn't have chemistry and but that was also like it felt like the only notable thing in the novella. So yeah, Tread of Angels. That was my introduction to Rebecca Roanhorse. Other people said read something else that's not her best work. So I will try something different in the future. Worst and best main character. So I'm just going to start with the worst main character, which was definitely Charlie from Book of Night. Like we're told she's this badass scammer and you don't really get that at all from the book. Like even when we go into her backstory, which we spent a good amount of time with her when she was 12 years old and there is a way to explore characters of younger ages in an adult book without feeling like a, ch like a children's story and Holly Black doesn't exactly do that. Like even though Charlie is like 30 she didn't feel like 30 like the writing just wasn't there and it, it was boring. Like I felt like we're getting all, like we're hearing all this stuff about her but n like there were no stakes nothing was really like affecting her in any way she's just kind of like passing through the story even the romance that she had was just unnotable so yeah Charlie from Book of Night she was not a good main character to follow now my best main character was actually Monique from Confessions of an Alleged Good Girl um, a lot of people talked about it but this is a really great book that you should check out if you do enjoy YA contemporary. It is probably one of the few YA contemporary stories that I see people like hyping that I actually would recommend to teens because I find that some of the ones that people are hyping, especially people who like 
were mainly reading adult romance up until recently and then just decided to jump into YA, they hype the Landis books. And they hype like those books that are saying the right things, but like as far as teens, like they're not give they're not giving like they could. Um, this one was actually really good though. Monique is a great char great character, a lot of complexities about her. She is a pastor's daughter. Um, she is questioning her faith. She is questioning her relationship with her parents because there's a lot about her parents that she doesn't know. Um, and she doesn't have the best relationship with her mother. She wants to have sex with her boyfriend and she just physically cannot. Her body keeps shutting down and she's not sure why. So she's discovering her body. Um, she's making new friends and she made like a new love interest. So like it, it, was, it was really good. We explored a lot of stuff in the story and I felt like she just had a great narrative voice. Like a lot of people love Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. And while I thought that was a good book, I thought this was actually miles ahead. Best and worst use of setting. So for best use of setting, I'm going to go with Don't Go Baking My Heart by Angie Peltier. And this is the follow up to Sweet Hand and it follows Reba and Kieran. So one thing I thought it did differently than Sweet Hand was we actually got to see more of Trinidad and Tobago, which I really appreciated it. Um, I am vaguely familiar with Trinidad and Tobago because I have family from there. So like sometimes they'll throw out names to me, but I don't really know where these places are necessarily or what they look like. Um, I have visited some of these places. So some of the places they talked about in the book I had a visual in my mind of already but I think even if you don't um, and you don't know much about the country this kind of gives you a good glimpse from the local perspective and I liked reading about like places like Queens Park um, in Savannah because that's a, like a major hub in Port of Spain and in Sweet Hand we didn't really like explore the country. You didn't get to see some of the sites like here we go to the beach in Tobago which is a very popular thing to do but you didn't get to really see that. So I like how we got to see these different landmarks and these different locations um, throughout the story and it just kind of helped paint, the, paint a better picture because we don't have a lot of contemporary stories that we read that are set in countries outside of the US that are not popular tourist destinations. For worse use of setting, I'm gonna go with Ashes of Gold by JL. So I think part of the problem with Ashes of Gold was Wings of Ebony was more like magical realism or metaphorical magic. And wing and in Ashes of Gold they tried to take that metaphor the metaphors and actually make it into like this big world without actually doing the world building. So Ashes of Gold, that was just one way that Ashes of Gold ended up falling flat. Um, the world never felt fully realized. We didn't get much world building. We couldn't really picture what anything looked like. Everything was just like vaguely Wakanda. As you know, like they have special technology and stuff. So it, it, it didn't give you much to go on with the setting. You, you couldn't really picture anything. Um, you don't get to get a good insight to this group of people because like it was like all the elders like disappeared or something. They just they weren't around in this book. Worst seasonal book and best seasonal book. So for best seasonal book I went with One, One, One Snowy Seduction by A.C. Arthur and this is just a quick novella. Um, it's set in the French Alps at a private chalet during Christmas time. So you got plenty of snow to go around. There is a little bit of winter activity. Um, there, there is just like a lot of sex. And it follows these two former college best friends who reunite and kind of hash out their issues. And it was really good. Like I really enjoyed it. It was just exactly that quick 
sexy story that I needed for Christmas. On the other hand, for my worst um, seasonal book, a, I'm going to go with a match made for Thanksgiving. I hear a lot of people talk about this book and this series in particular and I don't know I just can't get into it. Something about this series it doesn't work for me. I want to try some of her other books instead because for one this one was very meta. I hate meta in my romances like it makes me cringe so like when you're having your characters talk about romance tropes within the romance ugh, I can't I can't do it and that happens here so like the family invites like they have three sons and they invite them back for Thanksgiving dinner and they try yeah no three sons two sons it's either three or two sons and a daughter but anyway they invite them back for Thanksgiving and like the grandmother and the mom and the dad try to pair them based on romance tropes which is Again, that's cringe to me. So like one is like um, an opposites attract and one is a second chance romance and it, it, that, that whole part didn't work for me. Um, I thought that the main characters in this story had great bedroom chemistry, but outside of that they didn't really have good chemistry and like like I said, there was just other parts of this novella that were giving me cringe, which was the same thing that happened in her Christmas one. Like, there were other parts that were just giving me cringe that I couldn't move past. So, um. Best and worst fight scene. And best fight scene I'm going to give to The Blood Trials by Annie Davenport. So, I, I told my one friend I don't necessarily think she'll like the story itself just because knowing her taste like even though I like the story but I told her to still read it anyway for the fight scenes because I think she um Annie Davenport does a great job with movement during the scenes like a lot of fight scenes can feel very the same or it just feels like weapons clashing but you're not really feeling anything else like the stakes don't feel high I like that in the main character's mind we're getting her feelings in the moment we're getting a lot of movement like um one thing I had been talking to her about fight scenes before and she described it like she's like you have to write a fight scene the same way you write a sex scene like it's not just in and out in and out like you have to be in that character's head you have to be able to feel those emotions and I really felt them in those fight scenes like I like I they they kept me engaged throughout on the other hand worst fight scene goes to the Stardust thief which um, I think I rated like a four, but I might actually lower it to a three because there was a lot that was unmemorable about that book, but I, it never felt like we were in any real danger. Like the fights all felt like I couldn't really picture it. I mean, I'm already not a very visual reader, so I'm not one of those readers who can like see everything playing around like a movie in their head. So I need proper description, not too much description because that also does nothing for me but like I need to be able to put together the pieces in my head and that just wasn't happening in those fight scenes. Ooh, best and worst sex scene. So best sex scene I went with What a Match by Mimi Grace. I just thought she did it so well. It's like even like with the dirty talk sometimes <laughs> Depending on the romance read, dirty talk can be very cringe. Especially depends on what exact what like what euphemisms are using for male and female body parts. But here, I really enjoyed it. Um, I I I like it was just really good. Like go read it. Now on the other hand, for worst sex scene, I'm gonna go with the one in House of Hung. Like the no, there was like two actually I think in that book, but House of Hunger. Ugh, they they weren't working like from from using the word slit and it just felt very vulgar and unsexy and there wasn't like a flowing movement to the sex scenes it was just like we did it and that's it like the characters had no strong chemistry even like and it was supposed like she's playing up this dynamic of like this this is like a fucked up like toxic dynamic and like that you're supposed to like still strangely 
be like mesmerized by it and it, it wasn't working here at all they had no chemistry so it just made it even more painful because these sex scenes were just so dry i know alexis henderson has more of like a ya background and her um the year of the witching was like originally ya that got bought as adult and I know she's written like a couple like other little YA stuff. I think she needs to work more on her adult stuff because that that wasn't hitting. Best and worst, most anticipated read. So um, this was an interesting one too. The best one I put was somebody that I used to know by Dana L. Davis. I really do enjoy Dana L. Davis. I don't think I hyped this book enough because I never did a wrap up last month just because November was a crazy month for me just the way I started the month and then the way things ended in the month but I really liked somebody that I used to know it's one of the few stories like you'll hear me get up and recommend in a YA where we only have like one black girl character and there's like a lot of white characters around her because we actually address it in a meaningful way within the book like she is a transracial adoptee she has some insecurities about her appearance she's wearing these color contacts she's wearing these extensions um one of her childhood best friends comes back to town he's now this big singer and he's under a conservatorship after like a number of incidents that happened his mom put him under a conservatorship he's trying to prove to her that he is a, he's still a good kid um by going back to his roots and he is trying to get on like get her to approve this world tour so I'm so our main character and he's just like okay we need to be friends again to make this work for me and I really like how she kind of connects back to her black side because again it's a very different experience like not only being like in a very white like space all the time but it's like her immediate family is white too. Her mom, her dad, her siblings because they have their own biological children, her aunt, and she doesn't have anybody else black around her. So like that, um, he was like her one black friend previously so she's questioning like her blackness and trying to reconnect to that part of her identity in a meaningful way but she's also set on getting into Juilliard and she's a very skilled violinist and I found that dynamic very interesting as well because she's kind of learning to be able to pull back and take some breaks and have fun and live in the moment and I thought they just had really good chemistry in the romance too so it, it was a it was somebody that I used to know it really surprised me because I read a lot of lackluster um, YA contemporary but I really thought this was doing something special and I could also see it like playing out like a movie which very rarely do I see a book like where I can actually say oh this would make a good screen adaption. Worst anticipated read was Wish Out of Water by Holly Trent and it's like a little mermaid story kind of and I love mermaids I was obsessed with the little mermaid as a child but that was not it so um in this story it's like I said it's kind of like the little mermaid and you have this prince from from this faraway kingdom you have this mermaid um who comes from a big mermaid family but they live on land and in this quiet small town incident happens she ends up having to go away to his country i i think for like some forced relationship or forced marriage or something something i don't know this book was <laughs> really hard to get into i only read it because i owned it and i was reading it for the who picked this book book club it was actually my pick which made it even worse and it did one of those things I hate where the main character like has sex for the first time and suddenly we're acting like she's a porn star instead of the quiet virgin like the switch flipped like that and 
there's this really weird part where like he's like oh I broke a dildo because I was going so hard and me and Nicole were like what the fuck are they talking about that never happened and it th this book was a mess nice cover disappointing all around otherwise best slash worst ending so best ending I put as summon summoning up love by Sanithia William like I really am always looking for a romance that kind of doesn't do the third act breakup and but still finds a way to have interesting drama and that definitely did it here. I felt the characters were very mature and I liked how they were able to sit down and talk out their issues and in the story we're following characters who are at a crossroads in their life where they're ready to make a career change and they're figuring out how to take that leap. So everything about the ending here I really thought was satisfying and I appreciate it and plus it also left space open for other books in the series. Worst ending is going to be Blood Mark by Tracy Dion. I mean to be honest the whole book is a mess. See my one star review. Um, it was a mess for me all the way around but the ending was the absolute worst like it was just like threw away all the points that it was trying to make throughout the story and I'm like well where do you even go from here because none of this is making any sense and I I hate that it kind of negated the stuff like she was saying before and I'm like if it doesn't go in this direction the whole series is pointless. So those are all the categories that I have for my best and worst books of 2022. Hopefully 2023 is a lot better of a reading year where I'm not so in the middle with stories and I can actually like have things that bring me great joy and that I'm really passionate and want to yell at, about or things that are well actually I'm not wishing for bad books so never mind I don't I don't want I don't want those books that make me furiously angry. Um, let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section below. You can leave a heart emoji to let me know that you watched. And thanks so much for watching. I will check in with you guys in the new year. Bye!